First impressions of the AAA Lops mite, it's very small. My first reaction was shook. I wasn't sure if I saw what I thought I saw because it was so fast. And then I thought, wow, we're not ready. Tropolelaps is a very small external parasitic mite of honeybees. Tropolelaps are just like Varroa, living on the outside of bees, feeding on the bees, and damaging the bees. They are not in the United States yet, yet. At some point, they will be here. We always felt it would be confined to Southeast Asia, but in the past 20 or so years, it's starting to expand more into areas where we wouldn't have predicted it would have been a problem. Not if, but when it gets to the U.S. It's going to change beekeeping. Management strategies are going to totally change. They're not going to be able to keep bees the way they do right now. Another mite would be a bomb that a lot of us would not be able to survive. This is nationwide. This mobile dynamic of migratory beekeeping will spread it faster than we can imagine. If triple A lapse arrives right now, we are really not prepared. We don't have a plan in place. We don't have management suggestions in place. The longer we can prepare to keep the beekeeping industry from total collapse, the better. Thailand is the home to six of the 11 honeybee species found worldwide. The tropical climate and abundance of flowering vegetation supports the wide variety of honeybees, as well as other native pollinators. However, that same warm climate provides the mites that parasitize the native apis species the ideal conditions to reproduce year-round. Like Varroa destructor, Tropolelaps mercedaceae co-evolved with Asian honeybee species. About 50 years ago, the western honeybee Apis mellifera was brought to Thailand. Since then, the host jumping Tropolelaps mercedaceae mite has started to parasitize the western honeybee that North American beekeepers rely on for honey production and crop pollination. Like North American beekeepers, Thai beekeepers maintain a year-round mite management schedule that changes from operation to operation. Representatives of the Apiary Inspectors of America, the American Beekeeping Federation, and the Canadian Association of Professional Apiculturists toured three commercial beekeeping operations around Chiang Mai and had a close look at the management styles and practices of these Thai beekeepers, especially in the context of tropolelaps. I think it is important for U.S. beekeepers and just people in general to understand what Thai beekeepers are doing because they're the ones that have been having to deal with this mite for an extended period of time. It's super valuable to come here, not only to, to see the mite, but also to see the beekeepers and discuss with the beekeepers that are having to deal with this parasite. Just understanding how they're keeping bees, the tools that they're using is super important and maybe we can take some of those ideas back to North America. Fora Bee operates large apiaries around northern Thailand and produces honey products at their Chiang Mai factory. The group spoke with Fora Bee's general manager, Mr. Toto, and head beekeeper, Mr. Wan, to discuss their management practices and learn how this large operation controls the AAA lapse mite. Can you tell us just the beekeeper's experiences with? The triple A labs here in Thailand, like the, the effects of the mites on your honeybees. Man, this time, man, 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 so formic acid is a good a good product in your or active ingredient in his opinion. During the beekeeping year, Mr. Wan applies a rotation of formic acid and synthetic pyrethroid miticides, flumethrin and fluvalinate. He also performs cultural controls, which include removing brood from weak colonies and combining the remaining bees with strong colonies. Formic acid is the preferred treatment because it is food safe for honey. 
Formic acid also acts on Tropolalops mites, feeding and reproducing within capped honeybee brood cells. The most aggressive treatments occur prior to several honey flows from December to February. However, treatments are applied throughout the calendar year. In January, weak colonies are given a 20-day treatment of fluvalinate, which must be halted 10 days before the lychee bloom in February. The lungan trees bloom in March and April, providing Thai beekeepers with their most profitable honey crop of the year. In May, formic acid is applied. In June, thymol is used, which then leads to July and August applications of fluvalinate. As brood and mite populations rise in October, formic acid is used once again. And in November, thymol, flumethrin, and fluvalinate are all used depending on the severity of mite infestations. Treatments are withheld during wildflower nectar flows in December. Is this one of the treatments that beekeepers prefer to uh, use against tropolalops, or are many of them using... Sometimes they, they change. Uh, for uh, this period, they use this one, then they change this, and sometimes they also use the Chinese one. Okay. Uh, and uh, formic, formic acid. Okay. Yes, formic acid. Uh. So these two are the most common. Uh, my strip. Oh, ah, yes. yeah, the, from from. Yeah, yeah, Fuvalinate. Fu Fu yeah, Fuvalinate. Okay. In beekeeper minds, they are always think how to save their cost mm -hmm. uh, in, in for 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 here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they 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 also need the, to combine. Yeah. Yeah. They don't care this one contain mice or not. Mm -hmm. they, they just want to 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 okay. yeah to move back to their place mm -hmm. with the the less as less as possible, the yeah. colonies uh, to save the cost. Um, what are his thoughts on on the impact of tropolalaps versus mm -hmm. the impact of varroa destructor? Does mm -hmm. he think one is worse than the other, or are they equally uh -huh. equally as damaging to uh -huh. his colony? So more concerned with managing tropolalaps than varroa. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. At 4B, colonies are treated with chemicals for about 50% of the calendar year. Splits, brood removal, and requeening are the preferred control methods, but chemicals are used before and after the honey seasons to reduce mite numbers. Organic acids and synthetic miticides are used in rotation to prevent the mites from developing resistance. Supa Bee Company is Thailand's only woman-owned beekeeping company. Sisters Suwa and Suicha are second-generation beekeepers who took over the business from their parents who imported their first bees from Taiwan in 1985. Today, they manage 1,500 bee colonies and sell bee products in their store in northern Chiang Mai. Supa treats their bees in one block of time from September to November. From January to May, the bees forage on lychee and longan tree nectar and are left untreated during the rainy season from May to July. Come September, the women begin chemical treatments with flumethrin strips applied for two weeks. Supa Bee Company treats their colonies with chemicals before opting to split the colonies as a cultural control practice. In October, they use betacol, a liquid flumethrin solution. If bald brood persists, they will apply a second round and then, and only then, begin to cull the brood in colonies. Brood Brood frames that look healthy are placed into healthy colonies, while bad frames are burned. Brood, mites, and all. The colonies will draw out new frames during honey flows at other times of year. Amitraz is also used in October and November, diluted and sprayed by bottle in the colony. Treatments are stopped in December for wildflower nectar. I think uh, for the, about the treatment for the tropical lab, I, I think mixed together because the effect is different. So in Thailand, we mix a lot of the medical. Uh, some, sometimes we use in Thailand, sometimes we use a medicine from the China. Sometimes we use a, like a herbal in Thailand also. Okay. I think use for the treatment first, and after that, it's not an effect. We have to destroy the, the brood and make for the new, uh, new brood and making like a very strong from the queen bee to make like a better uh, larva brood and the quality of the worker bee. Mm -hmm. What do you do with the brood frames after you take them out? <laughs> uh, we make a new brood. 
Right, but what do you do? Do you just take the comb off of the frames and... Like, and burn. And burn. burn it. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And we... And then they build new comb. Yeah, yeah. That okay. is easy because uh, we uh, focus in the queen bee. Because if the queen bee is very strong, the baby bee and the brood is uh, very quickly to, to make oh, a population re- of the bees. They recover quickly? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you did not treat and manage and, and uh, remove brood from your colonies, how long would it take for that colony to die from trophallelapse, for a colony to die? Maybe one, one, month. Month. one month. One month. One month. Beekeeper Mr. Don keeps bees in southern Chiang Mai. The North American group visited with him in one of his apiaries along the banks of the Ping River. At this time of year in early February, he is getting his bees ready for the Longan honey flow, the most important product he will make all year. In his 18 years of beekeeping, he has seen tropolelaps affect his colonies, but the mites are not the only concern he has for his bees. <laughs> Ah, climate change is the big problem. Oh, it's a, a mite problem, it's a field problem. Uh-huh. Uh, it's a big problem. Uh, it's a big problem. Uh, it's a big problem. Uh, it's a big In the winter, he can fry the warua more than tapila lab. In summer, he saw tapila lab more than warua. Uh-huh. In the general, oh yes, he uh, found a topila lab more than Varua. Can you take me through your monitoring of AAA labs? Because I know you look for open cells, but do you also look for mites on frames? Or what else do you do for monitoring? He have three... Uh, character of uh, his monitoring. The first one is the open cell in the in the cell and inside cell have the pupa state in the white eye and open cell is uh, the, the first one. And the second one he saw the uh, abnormal of worker wing. Uh, and the last one is he saw the adult of mite cry and run on the comb. How often does he monitor with open cells? Ah, he do boy, my, in the way that he do, that it's a bad, 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 bad. Oh, check for it. Ah, one time per week. Okay. Yeah. And does he every colony or just some colonies? He do to con, me. Do to con, have to do con. Every con, yes. What advice does he have for U.S. beekeepers that may see triple A laps in the future? Mm-hmm. Since we don't have it right now, what would he recommend? He mentioned about the uh, uh, different bee farm. Uh, he mentioned should be work together if this period have a lot of mice should be work together for the control in the same way. Uh-huh, because uh, between different farm can uh, can spread. spread. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. Is he interested in any specific triple A labs research? He uh, need the in- interest research about the uh, alternative uh, food source for the bee because now a day uh, we have uh, lacked uh, pollen source mm-hmm. for the bee. Uh, he needs he need this research about that. And if you uh, now you can see the the white flower is the weed is uh, have a lot now. It's okay, but this one have a low protein not the best for the bee. He, he needs a new food protein for, for bee. Mr. Don depends on regular checkups inside his colonies during treatment season to determine mite levels. He checks his colonies weekly, and when he notices roughly 30 cells of bald brood per brood frame, he considers this a sign of high mite infestation. As an independent beekeeper, Mr. Don produces honey and pollen products to sell in the night markets around Chiang Mai. Like North American beekeepers with Varroa, Thai beekeepers are constantly working to find more efficient ways to deal with triple A lapse mites. I think the most important thing there on triple A lapse management from both Thai beekeepers and the Asian honeybee species is the brood breaks. 
the Asian honeybee species, they get too many triple elapse, they abscond from where they are, and they start their new home. The Thai beekeepers, they're taking brood out. They're doing brood breaks. And I think that's one of the biggest management things that we're gonna take away from it. So one thing that was really a take home message from meeting the commercial beekeeper, Mr. Wan here in, in Thailand, first off, he's really rotating through many different active ingredients. He was using thymol, he was using formic acid, but he was also using a synthetic like fluvalvanate. But then he was also looking at brood breaks and taking advantage of low amounts of brood at different times of the year for when he can apply these chemicals. I really appreciated just the diversity of tools that he's employing and I think that that's something that particularly uh, beekeepers in the United States should sort of take to heart, both for potential tropolalaps landing in the United States, but also for varroa destructor. Thai and American organizations are working to develop and optimize methods used for triple lapse monitoring and treatment, taking into account the lessons learned from 50 years of mite presence in Western honeybees in Thailand.